Thanks, Chris. Um, good afternoon, everybody. Today I'm gonna talk to you about um, staying true to your brand and keeping laser focused on your North Star. It's not always easy to do, but I believe it's the way to win and the way to achieve success. So a little background on me. Um, I started my career at Reebok, as Chris mentioned. Um, they're located, headquartered in Boston. I also worked at Cone Communications. Um, at Reebok, I had the opportunity to work on everything from the Dan and Dave campaign to uh, Step Reebok to Allen Iverson to many different sports um, collaborations and music collaborations such as 50 Cent, Jay-Z. It was super exciting and I really got a chance to see the power of bringing music and sports together. And then in about 2007, a, a colleague of mine at uh, Reebok said, hey, Diane, Under Armour's looking for a head of PR. I was like, Under Armour, where are they out of? He's like, Baltimore. I'm like, Baltimore? I'm not moving to Baltimore. <laughs> so we had a good chuckle about it. And then he organized me to meet up with the head of marketing at the time, um, a guy named Steve Batista who was the 19th employee hired there. He came up with Click Clack and a lot of the, the original um, campaigns that really um, disrupted the industry. Um, but I met with Steve and we met at the Super Bowl in 2007 and um, I was very intrigued. And I said, all right, I'm gonna come to the headquarters. I'm gonna see what this is all about. Um, so one thing that was very appealing to me was I had the opportunity to be my own architect. So it was super appealing because I was able to work um, at a founder-led uh, company, Entrepreneurial Spirit, and really start the uh, comms function. Um, they just had, they had like an intern, they had an agency. Um, the company at that time was about 500 million, but they didn't have a team. So it was super um, exciting for me to be a part of building something. So I started in 2008. I actually was hired in 07, to Chris's point, but uh, Reebok enforced my non-compete. So I started in 08. Um, I currently oversee comms, experiential marketing, and influencer. And Under Armour today is a global athletic performance brand. We operate in countries around the world, and we're a little over five billion in uh, revenue. So a little bit of history on the brand, if you don't know kind of the background. Um, the brand was founded in 1996 by Kevin Plank. And if you look at the picture on the far left side, the insight really started when he was 12 years old playing football. As you can see, he has a flannel shirt on and there wasn't an option back then to wick away sweat, to give him the edge, to make him lighter, faster, stronger. So he really always loves talking about like that was one of his insights where, you know, what did athletes wear under their football uniform? Then he was a walk-on at the University of Maryland and he needed every bit of an edge he could have. And if anyone's been to Baltimore in August, it's 95 degrees, super hot. And so Kevin was like, I like to sweat a lot. So he actually had cotton shirts under his uniform and it would get soak, soaking wet, weigh like three pounds, and he's like, this is ridiculous, like this, all this extra weight, I need some, there's gotta be something better. So he had an idea of to take like Lycra type material and create a t-shirt. And so he started wearing it himself, then he started seating it with his buddies on lacrosse team, the football team, Everybody was super into it. They're like, oh my gosh, this is giving me an edge. It's making me lighter. The moisture wicking um, technology was incredible. So it was a solution for athletes to give them the edge. And that was really how our, how our company was born on the football field. So Kevin, at, when he graduated Maryland, you can see on the right-hand side, he took over his grandmother's townhouse in Georgetown. So this is him in his office on the ground level the basement they use for inventory, and you can see how they labeled the boxes. And then upstairs, he lived um, in the upstairs. So from Georgetown, the company grew incredibly fast, and we had an incredible growth. So they moved the company from Georgetown to Baltimore. And 
Over the years, we grew, um, we had 26 quarters of 20 plus percent growth. We were spreading the message and building our cult following around the world. We entered new categories. We started out in football, as I mentioned. We entered new categories such as running, basketball. We had amazing campaigns. I mentioned the Click Clack campaign. And we had I Will What I Want with Misty Copeland, which was really created a movement. Uh, rule Yourself, We Will, Will Makes Us Family. We had a lot of different exciting campaigns. The comms team was firing on all cylinders and communications became a strategic weapon. So we were building a constant drumbeat of storytelling um, you know, throughout the world. So it was a really exciting time. But as you guys know, no road is completely smooth. So our first major hurdle was at the Sochi um, Olympics. I think it's important to tell you this story because it really shows how we stayed true to our DNA and how we came out of the crisis better than before. So we partnered with US, US Speed Skating to create the world's fastest speed skating suit. That was our mission. Our innovation team was confident that we created this amazing suit. So the problem that I'm gonna talk about is the speed skaters at the Olympics, they didn't do well and Under Armour was blamed. The good news is we came out of the crisis better than before. So I'm gonna to talk to you about what actually happened, what we did, and let's get into it pre-games. So what we did is we had a, um, an event in Denver and we invited media from around the world. We had our top athletes there, Lindsey Vaughn was there, um, a lot of other um, athletes on the bobsled team, speed skating, et cetera. And we had a massive event, you can see on the, on, the bottom, um, on the bottom of the slide, and we showcased the uniforms. And we declared, hey, we partnered with Lockheed Martin, we've worked with top aerospace engineers, we are confident this is gonna be the fastest speed skating suit ever. And our innovation team told us that. Um, so we really declared, we put, it, we put a stake in the ground, and in fact, we said this is gonna give the US athletes an unfair advantage. And it wasn't just us saying it, it was the athletes too. So they were wear testing it, and you can see some of the comments from the athletes pre-Olympics, what they were saying. I think my favorite one up there is the way it smells is fast. <laughs> So it was, it was pretty incredible, and we were like so happy at Under Armour. We're like, we're going to win so many medals. It's going to be incredible. Um, so then, of course, the Olympics starts, and we're watching speed skating. Athletes aren't meddling. They're not going on the podium. They're not winning. So we sort of were scratching our head, you know, what could it be? What could it be? And then all of a sudden, the Wall Street Journal called me, it was February 13th, I'll never forget that day, and said, hey, I was talking to some athletes after they lost, and you know they're a bit emotional, and they were saying, what could it be? And the athletes were like, well, maybe it's the speed skating suits. So then that reporter took that narrative and ran with it. And on February 14th, well, actually it hit online on the night of the 13th, that story, um, basically headlined was, are the new suits slowing down the US? And then that was on the front page on um, February 14th. So the story began to spiral, and it was literally, I was getting calls from around the world, from press outlets, the social media, of course, everyone knows how quickly things spiral, and once, it, once the train leaves the station, it's really hard to bring it back. So I literally spent Valentine's Day in my office with our head of innovation doing interviews. One of our things that we felt confident in was the technology. So we're like, we're gonna get on the phone and we're gonna talk about all of the testing, all of the athlete testing, our belief in the technology. But really what was most important to us was that the athletes were comfortable. They were confident in the suits and we were willing to do anything to try to get them on the podium. So Valentine's Day was a little rough. I wasn't feeling the love. Um, so we basically, after that, you know, we started to get you know, headlines from experts in the industry saying, 
This is every marketer's worst nightmare. Under Armour has to figure out what went wrong. A brand is a promise. You know, we broke the, the promise. So it was a no-win situation. Um, behind the scenes, a lot of people were saying, why don't you guys just get out of speed skating? You know, it's not like Under Armour has a big speed skating market. Any speed skaters out here? I, I am in Canada. <laughs> um, so anyways, um, we, we took, as a team, we huddled. Kevin Plank, the CEO, was very much engaged, very much involved. And, you know, at the end of the day, the athlete's success was critical to us. So really what we did is we took it back to our mission statements and we're like, okay, we need to make athletes better and we're gonna do everything we can. We had a seamstress on site in Sochi to do any sort of adjustments, change out their uniforms if they didn't feel comfortable. We were, we were willing to do whatever it took to get them on the podium. And you know we're not the brand that's going to run away. So when things happen, you know we're gonna we're gonna stick together. We're gonna stand by our athletes. We never blame the athletes, and we're gonna figure out like how do we come up with a solution. So Kevin actually um, had the idea in the middle of as I mentioned before. Everybody was like, why don't you just get out of it? Because there was conversation about speed skating. The, um, you know, they weren't very organized, et cetera, the organization. So Kevin said, you know what I wanna do? I wanna double down on speed skating. I wanna show everybody how truly committed we are. And so in the middle of the Olympic games, when we were under so much scrutiny, we decided we're gonna announce an eight year extension with US speed skating through 2022. So it was a bold move. And I said, okay, that's what you wanna do, let's do it. So we ended up doing interviews. Um, I immediately said, you got to clear your schedule. We're going to do interviews with USA Today. We're going to go up to New York. He said, you know, Di, can I just do interviews from Baltimore, satellite? I said, no. I said, it's really important to have the chemistry in person with the media. So we ended up going up to New York. We did all of the shows. We did CNN, CBS This Morning, CNBC. It was unexpected. And here's some snapshots of the TV interviews. Um, and Kevin said, when we're doubling down, we want people to know when we get knocked down, we get back up bigger, better, and stronger. So we got a lot of positive publicity. People you know, said it was a gutsy move. And we got a lot of accolades. And you know, one thing we did um, is we always kept you know, our executives. We didn't run away from the negative press. We leaned into it. So this is some um, headlines after the games, Under Armour's Olympic experiences, textbook case for how to handle a crisis. Good PR moves aid Under Armour. So it was, it was the key learnings for us were, you know, don't blame your customers, in our case, the skaters, and we stand by our athletes. That's the core of our mission. That's the heart of our DNA. Stay true to your mission statement be available and transparent to the media, and keep the CEO and other executives engaged. Those were key lessons for us, and when we look back on it and we say, okay, you know, what were the key learnings and how do we learn from this with other initiatives and other situations at Under Armour? And we often go back, we kind of look at this as a, as a case study to like what worked and how we can continue to be successful. So, as I mentioned, um, it all comes down to your mission. It's the heartbeat of the brand. It's our North Star. As we became bigger as an organization, we really, um, you know, we were pulled into a lot of different conversations, a lot of different issues. And like I said, we grew incredibly fast. So we really, we talked as a team and we really needed to declare our values. We always knew what our values were, but we really needed to formalize our values. So at the end of 2017, we actually rolled out our values to the company. So this is behind me, our, our values. And Chris, you mentioned it this morning, you know, how important your values are to the success of a company. So the great thing about having these values in place is it, it is the critical lens to everything we do. Prior to that, we were getting pulled in some conversations or some areas where maybe we shouldn't have been been a part of or playing in 
And we were like, you know what? This serves as a critical lens. If it isn't one of these core principles or core values, it doesn't make sense for us to do it. So I'm gonna to touch upon a few, um, and it's not only, of course, declaring, it's living your values. So love athletes. This is obviously our heart and soul, and everything we do is to give athletes an edge, make them better. So this is just a snapshot of some of our athletes on our roster. We have a number of, of tier one athletes, um, but it really just starts with when we're, when we're making product and new innovation, how do we make sure that we're giving them the edge like Kevin ha did when he first came out with the t-shirt? Always connect. This is another core value. So this is about holistically connecting to your consumer, engaging them, being, being part of the conversation, part of the community. So at every touch point, we're engaging them. And this is a recent launch we did around the Rush technology. Create fearlessly. This was a partnership, I don't know if anybody read about it, but it was super cool. We partnered with Virgin Galactic. Virgin Galactic came to Under Armour and said, hey, we think you guys have amazing innovations. We want your help in designing and creating the first ever commercial spacesuit. So we worked with Richard Branson and his team. Um, Richard is, is, is pretty crazy, but he's fun. Um, so we unveiled um, our first ever um, spacesuit and space boots in New York in the fall. It was in October. The first com commercial um, space flight is supposed to take place this year. So it'll be a historic moment, super exciting. We also designed the base layer product. So we utilize both existing technologies as well as future technologies to create this uh, one, in a one of a kind suit. And we met with a lot of the future astronauts and said, what do you guys need? What are you looking for? What do you need to give you that extra edge? And it was about mobility. So when they're you know, up like with the gravity and whatnot, they needed to make sure that they were light, they could freely move their arms, pockets for you know, certain things like phones. So what I'd like to do is show you a quick video um, of our head of innovation and head of footwear talking about this unique partnership. You know, by the end of this century, I hope that hundreds of thousands of people will have, have had the chance of becoming astronauts. Virgin Galactic is introducing an entirely new industry. This is the dawn of something very new, something that we don't totally understand. It's not going away. We will travel like this in the future. And we as a brand get to play in a very important role at the very beginning of this. And to me, that is hugely exciting for the brand. We're an innovation company, so we bring innovation to our athletes in apparel and in footwear. We looked at the melting point between a top tier athlete and a future astronaut, and what sort of performance attributes does the apparel need to have and the footwear we need to have to meet the needs that a Virgin Galactic came to us with. Since none of us had ever traveled to space, we were trying to figure out what would be the most relevant use case uh, that we'd be designing for. It was safety, it was comfort, it was fit. This is the future astronaut boot featuring clone technology and also hover technology from Under Armour. You're basically going from sea level back up to space and then back down in a relatively quick amount of time. We're talking hours, not days. So your body's gonna go through a lot of changes. We have uh, the flight DNA for Virgin Galactic that matches the same on the flight suit. So it really presents itself as a unified product. When they put it on, I really hope that they feel like they're ready to go to space. Three, two, one, release, release, release. Fire. Fire. It's a pinch me moment. It's sort of like you can't make this up. Welcome to the club, astronaut. <laughs> it is perfectly aligned with, with our pursuit of innovation and, and breaking down boundaries and trying new things and taking risks. We hope that it is a long-lasting partnership. 
and we are humbled and proud and privileged to be a part of it. So that's a, you know, it's a really exciting partnership for us. Um, another one of our values is staying true. So stay true. Um, and that really is the, the heartbeat of, of my speech today as well. But this is a little girl. I don't know if anyone read about this, but it's a great story. It was a little nine-year-old who was getting ready for basketball season, and she wanted to buy the Curry Fives. And she went on our website, and she couldn't find them. They were only in boys. And she was super upset. And she wrote le a letter to Stephen Curry and said, hey, I want to rock the Currys too. You know, you don't have them for girls on your website. So Curry immediately, you know, talked to Under Armour. We came up with a solution. We realized that what we did was we had smaller sizing and we didn't, on our website, we didn't put them under girls. We had them all under boys. So we quickly worked on the back end to come up with a solution. Stefan actually wrote a letter back to Riley, tweeted it out, and then we said, also, we're coming out with our United We Win for International Women's Day. We're coming out with our first ever product, and we want you to design the insole of this new shoe. So you can see she's on the right-hand side, and then Stefan surprised her with the shoe in Oakland, um, and then he brought her to a game. We did a you know number of interviews, but one of the things that we did is, is we came out to the press and we're like, hey, you know, it was a miss on Under Armour's part and we corrected the situation within three days and then here's what we're doing. And we ended up getting tons of publicity, um, you know, and it was trending on social. It was super, super um, positive. So we turned what could have been a negative situation into a positive. So like I said, you know, Under Armour makes you better. Um, and it's really important to come back to your mission statement and not get, you know, not get distracted. It's, you know, easy to do, especially as your brand grows. And I've seen it even with Under Armour, the elasticity of our brand from outdoor to ballet to football to basketball. But it's really important to stay true to your core DNA. And we have, you know, of course, today we have different people saying, why don't you get an athleisure? Why don't you do this? But for us, we know our heart and soul and our core DNA is performance. So we are more focused than ever on being laser focused on um, performance, human performance. So we're true to our roots, it's our sharp point. So in fact, we just did, last month, we hosted our first ever Human Performance Summit. And we brought everyone into Baltimore headquarters. We brought in 200 media, influencers, athletes, trainers, some of our collegiate partners. It was an incredible event. And we really gave them an immersive experience. They got to test out our latest and greatest product. We walked them through the Innovation Center. We had immersive uh, new workouts, new ways of working out, um, things you know with mind, body. Um, we did a lot of really cool things. It was a three-day um, summit. So I wanted to show you guys a little sizzle from the event. We can break down any barrier and overcome any obstacle. The only way is through. Absorb the information of these world-class people. You gotta work through the pain, work through adversities, obstacles. The only way is through, guys. Let's make this happen. Thank you. It's an experience that I'm never gonna forget. Mente muy, muy, muy bueno. That's my drive. You have to fall in love with the work. That's a little sizzle from the event. Um, we also launched our, this is some of the coverage, some of the highlights we got. Um, we also launched our new uh, brand campaign. It's more than just a campaign, it's a platform. There's a podcast that we launched as well. There's a number of other digital um, initiatives we're doing. So what I wanna do is show you a quick, um, the Anthem Spot, which rolled out um, during January, during key sport moments, and it's gonna continue out throughout the year. So I wanted to show you the, the new commercial. Listen. You're more than your successes. 
You're more than your failures. Everything you got. You got this. You're the work. All right. Dig deep. It's dirty work. It's work that hurts. Work that defines you. Good. It's that fire that burns inside you. One more. Be you. It's always been you. You're the work. That smoke. Give him that fire. Super excited about that uh, new campaign, and um, you know, if you, if any of you are familiar with some of our original commercials, with the um, the music, the marching band kind of inspiration, the horns, we brought that back. So again, it's really about you know staying true to your performance DNA. Um, Under Armour started on the football field, and we're really laser focused on on that message to the consumer. So um, ultimately, you know, we believe that's the way to win. And I hope um, my story was helping you with, um, with all of your um, marketing um, initiatives, but I really appreciate your time today. Thank you so much.